what do three people married to Korean spouses have to say about their experiences? If you want to know, let's go. Hello, amigos. My name is Patrick Young, and I am here at the start of every single month to tell you about teaching internationally from my home base here in Korea. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more info about life abroad. So just for you, I've gathered together three people from the U.S. who live in Korea and have Korean spouses. Each has been married for at least a decade, and they all have kids who are dual citizens. Fortunately for me, they all agreed to let me interview them and find out about their varied experiences. I wasn't trying to only pick white guys, but the two women I asked didn't feel comfortable sharing their family info on this little old YouTube thing. Today's setup, pretty simple. Each person will talk about what they like best about being married to a Korean, their biggest challenges being married to a Korean, and their biggest surprises being married to a Korean. Let's begin. Being able to sort of find in things that make a lot of sense or that you can appreciate or enjoy, and the freedom to adopt those as your own are really liberating. I think from a cultural perspective, you get to be a part of something beyond your, your sort of narrow scope. And now when I watch the news or I see people who sort of, um, you know, born, raised, grow up and live, I, I don't think that they're unfortunate and I don't feel sorry for them, but I definitely see that they, their perspective is limited. It doesn't make me, you know, better or more interesting. I'm certainly not any more interesting than most people. But, um, but it does allow me a perspective that I feel like I would have lost if I had married someone outside of my tribe. One of the kind of like characteristic traits of Korea and Koreans is this complete, absolute focus on educational outcomes. And so my wife is very much that way as well. She cares a great deal about our son's educational outcomes. Um, there are some caveats in there, but to have somebody who's your partner who's super, super committed to the raising of your child and their success, I mean, that's that's a big thing. Not everybody, not everybody's like that. There are a lot of people, um, in, especially in Western cultures, where you know they don't, they're not as focused on, on outcomes for their kids. Um, but I don't, you know, that's not really the standard for a Korean. So it's like she really, really wants you know our son to be super successful, and she's willing to put in a lot of time. I, can reasonably say that my son's like upbringing is really solid because he has a parent who really is invested in, in you know what he becomes. I think the best thing by far is um, sort of integrating that culture into your family. It just adds a lot to your life. I think, um, especially now that I have a child, so watching him grow up in both cultures and you know in our house we. We do things that are Korean and we do things that are American in terms of what we eat or the, the, the values we hold or the things we talk about um, or some of the traditions we have. So I like that. And I think that that's sort of like value added to my, to my life. We have sometimes really, really different ideas about what is right and proper, what ought to be done. We both have good intentions. But the way we want to see those things realized are often really dramatically different. Um, and that creates conflict. Um, you know, in, in, when it comes to our son, for example, sometimes we'll have really divergent opinions about how to go about something. I mean, there's been sometimes some conflict because we have different opinions and it's really hard to reconcile them because they come from such different cultural backgrounds. And I, it's kind of the same with any international marriage, I suspect. When your wife makes friends who are, are Korean um, and they are married to someone outside of Korea, there's an expectation that you become friends. Uh, and yeah, that's not how I make friends at all. It's worked out quite well in some cases. In other cases, it's like, seriously, we have to go visit those people again. But also in sort of the challenging realm, when one person is Korean and one person is, is not Korean, um, Neither one of you has experience being anything other than what they are. I have no experience being anything but American. She has no experience being anything but Korean. Um, and especially when you have kids, neither parent has any kind of experience what the, the kids experience. For us, you know, you're either one or the other at any given time. 
So the sort of where do I where do I fit? Where do I belong? You know, the only people who have experience like that are are the people in that position. And so just being able to identify the challenges that your children are going through that you can't speak authoritatively on. We can't fully experience what they experience. We can we can give them what we think is helpful advice or anything like that, but they're going to have to find their own way. I think the as I get older this feeling of like you're you can never fully satisfy either partner's families, right? Like we're either always going to be closer to her family or closer to mine. And someone will always feel sort of that that's less than ideal. I'm so thankful for all the, for all the perks and blessings that I get because I chose this lifestyle. But one thing I envy is like you hear about people who's like, oh, your family all just lives back in Michigan, huh? So you just visit Michigan and you're all good. And like that's like when you look at, you know, international couples that work in our school, they are able to still kind of live where they want, but then ultimately their family's in one place. Like, I'll never have that situation. I would say specifically the fact that green cards are not, they are not citizenship. You don't keep them. You have to keep them through living somewhere. And so you don't get the, the luxury of just like, Let's spend a year in Korea, let's spend two years in America, let's spend another two years in Korea, three years in America. It doesn't work like that. Every time you every time you made that decision to move back to one of the countries, you've got to go through a green card interview process again. You have to pay your $1,000. You have to go to the embassy and get things checked out. I, and I just had no idea. I don't know why I, I missed that. My wife kind of believes this, although she doesn't. It's like she knows that it'll create conflict if she brings it up, so she's just not, she doesn't bring it up anymore. But she believes that radiation, radi radiation from computer screens and so on damages your eyes. Um, but, you know, you know, no more than any other light does. But there are just, there are certain prejudices, culturally held beliefs about really specific things that can be kind of shocking sometimes. Well, the surprising part is just starting to to take on things that seem really normal and make a lot of sense and that you value and appreciate culturally. That then, when people outside of that, people who you share a cultural background with, look at it and go, "Wow, you're not one of us anymore. You're one of them. You're basically Korean. When you're when you're together, you just create your own family culture. You know, there's you get teased a lot. I think." You know, positively and playfully about, oh, well, you're basically Korean. Thank you to everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified about my new episodes. I'll be back in just 30 short days, and I look forward to seeing you then.